So Tom. Todd. <laughs> it is so good to be here with you. I mean, I, I can't tell you. So in the 10 years that I've been here, I think that you have always been kind of in and out and weaving around and been, had all kinds of uh, roles in my life. But I don't know how many of our folks out there have had exposure to you. So I think, um, I think uh, people would probably enjoy getting to know a little bit about your story, where you came from. So were you, like, were you actually born in the courtyard here? I heard that as a, as a, as a mythic story. You're born right here. I was actually born up the street, but I was left outside the doorstep of the office. It, I'm so glad we have that adoptive ministry here that we could, that we could claim you right. in the thrift shop and everything is good. <laughs> but I feel like I, I've been here forever with you. Yeah. And, and you and I have been through such wonderful adventures, mm -hmm. if I could use that yeah. term. And if you remember, I was on the... Uh, the the vestry at the time, so I was part of the committee that hired you. You were. And so, do you have any regrets about that decision? Oh no, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, maybe other people do, but they were like, "What? What were you? What were you guys thinking?" Tell me, where, so where'd you come from? And well, well, I'm a New Yorker. What's your background? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker, and I transplanted myself here back in '98. So I transferred from New York for a job. Okay. I said I would be down here for just a few years, do my job, and then go back to New York. But something happened, and I met my wife, Kristen, who's over there listening to us, and I never went back. And, and, and meeting my wife was just, just the joy of my life. Tell us a little bit about your, about your, um, about your job, your career, vocation. Cause a lot of folks around here maybe know you from... Uh, maybe working on behind the camera, the right. technology thing. Right. And also, I think a lot of people know photography, but I don't know if they know the full kind of background that you, that you come from. No, and I'll go real quick, but I'll tell you, the, one of the hardest jobs I ever had was a paper boy. <laughs> was having to go out after school and deliver newspapers to 40 houses, no matter what the weather was, mm -hmm. every day. And then you have to go back on the weekends and collect your $4 from these people that would never answer their door. Being a paper boy was a tough job. Tough job. Tough. My first real job beyond that was I was working as a transporter in, in a hospital in the radiology department. So I was wheeling patients all over, the, uh, all over the hospital. And that inspired me to get a career in radiology. So uh, right after high school, uh, I went to a um, program that trained me to be uh, uh, an x-ray tech. So I had a whole career in uh, radiology taking people's x-rays, MRIs, and CTs. So I was working for a very uh, a, a good group of radiologists in New York, and they wound up selling their practice to a company. That's when corporations were starting to get really involved in, in medicine. So I found myself being absorbed by this bigger company, uh, working as a manager. And then that company eventually got sold to a very large radiology company, mm -hmm. which was the largest provider of diagnostic services in the country at the time. Wow. So I moved down to Florida. There were a lot of years in between all this, but eventually I moved to Florida to take a vice president of operations job for um, the company based in West Palm Beach. Wow. So, so I, like how many, like how many employees would... Uh, we had 2,000 employees. Wow. We had 150 imaging centers throughout the country. Mm -hmm. So I had a go all over the country every week. We were, we were building imaging centers, we were closing them, we were moving them, we were doing all sorts of things. So I, I just had a huge scope of responsibility. Uh, and, and really some very interesting projects that I had to work on, very mm -hmm. tough projects. So uh, it was a great, great experience. But I sold, so, so then I started my own business in 2001. I sold it in 2008, so in 2001, uh, I got some partners together from Tampa, some radiologists, and we bought a piece of the company that I had moved to Florida for. Uh -huh. And that was based in Tampa. So that was two outpatient, two very large outpatient imaging centers that we started. And then we sold them in 2008. And that's when I started doing commercial photography. Yeah. So, you were, so you were taking, you were in the business of taking pictures of the insides of people you got and it. And then you just transfer that. 
Is, right. Was that a difficult leap to start working on your own, taking pictures on the outsides of people? You know, no, it's, it kind of feels the same in many ways. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing that the uh, healthcare business taught me was empathy for people. Mm. When you work with the sick every day, you really, you really start to feel something and, and yeah. it helps you deal with people on a larger level that uh, translates into how I interact with people today. Is that it? I feel like I have empathy for people and... Uh, it's a different, it's yeah. a different level, isn't it? Yeah, it? yeah, it really is. So then talk a little bit about why, so you got this, you got this, uh, you got this business, you're on your own, you run your own schedule, you do your own thing in terms of, in terms of photography. And I know you, so you were the guy who came and took shots of me when, right. you know, when I first got my job right. here. You took the picture of the bishop when, right. you took the picture of the bishop when he was right. elected here. Right. So you, right. you had a lot of professional photography, uh, uh, you know, your own schedule and your own stuff. So why, why would you want to come and, and work in, in an administrative office for a church? I mean, you've been on the vestry. You've seen all of the kinds of, all different kinds of things, right. challenges that churches face. Why would you want to come and do that? That's a very good question. <laughs> I love it here. I love St. Mary's. I loved it since the day we came here 15 years ago. I'm comfortable here. This, this feels like an extension of my home. And when COVID came around, I was here a lot. Yeah. It gave me comfort to you work were. on these special yeah, projects that we had to work on. So really the answer is I love it. And the job that you have given me uh, touches all of my skill sets. I'm, I'm able to be creative, you know, with, with Father Christian and you and, and do these things. Uh, it really rounds me out as an individual and I feel like this is a great time in my life to do this. I really feel like the time is right. It just feels good. That's so great. And, uh, and of course, this is a church, so a church is different than a business. It is. And so a different set of attitudes and different set of uh, <laughs> goals. Right. But there is this, this so, I, so I, I think for a lot of folks, there would be a, a sense that, I mean, I can go on and I can do, I can kind of make my mark in other places, but to come to a church, you probably, um, it probably demands more of you, and so you have to really be a believer. You have right. to really believe in what it is that you're doing. So, 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 right. say just a little. So, where's God in your life, and what does that? Where's what's that? What's that deeper calling for you? Yeah. So, um, God has been in and out of my life over the years. As a as a young boy, I was uh, I went to a Catholic elementary school, Catholic high school, a Catholic college. So it's always been one way or another, uh, God has one way or another been in my life, um, but not, not as much as it is today. And I feel, I feel more connected with people, with God, and more connected with things than I ever have. Hmm. And working here at the church benefits so many people. It just doesn't benefit me and you. Just all the lives that touch folks here at St. Mary's. Yep. So, you know, I feel if I can do my job well, it benefits so many people. Yeah, and, it, and, and it will, it, it's, it's a vessel for bringing God and happiness into people's life. So, Tom, tell me about, so everybody has to have a navigating system you know, for, you know, for how they, for how they run their life and, and run their career. So what are some core beliefs for you? Some things that really keep you uh, kind of focused and moving forward? That's, a, that's great. Uh, it's a great question. Um, I, I try to, first of all, have a good time with whatever I do today. You know, not, not let it weigh so heavy on me. Yeah. So whatever I touch, and, uh, uh, and, and Chris and I certainly value that together. We try to enjoy and have a good time with whatever we do. So he's a great partner in that, in that crime right there. You know, I feel that people should be more real than right. You know, it's not, you don't have to be right all the time. Just be, be kind of true 
to yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I also feel it's good to lighten the loads of others. Mm -hmm. You know, just what can I do to, to take that load off you? And I'm talking more uh, professionally here and as a manager, but Among also some of it, okay. yeah, some of it applies to myself. You know, lighten the load, lighten the load of others around you, you know. Um, I like to make all members of our team feel as important as they truly are. Because we have, well, we have a great campus here. It's wonderful. We're, we're so blessed. But it's the people, the people that work here, the people that volunteer, and the people that worship here are really what makes this place special. And all the unique personalities that are in this church, and for those of you listening, you know who, who you are. Um, I, don't like to be, I don't like to be controlling either as a as a manager. I think when you're too controlling, it kind of limits creativity or, or the growth of others, you know? And um, I think it's okay to fail, too. God knows we've had our share of failures over the last few months here in, in doing our- Some more notable than others. Right, <laughs> right. And, and, you know, it's just kind of, it's kind of fun to just laugh at that. Oh, that was terrible, you know? Uh, so I, I think you have to give space to allow people to fail. Yeah. Let, it's okay, just try it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, you know? Then the other core, core belief, I, I think you have to think critically. You have to be a critical thinker in your, really in everything you do, mm -hmm. you know? And so, and that's a skill I've learned later in life is just to be able to look at a situation and, is that, is that, is that the way it should be? You know, that type mm -hmm. of thing, so. so. Yeah, so those are some of my beliefs, and uh, uh, you know, I hope to share them and kind of instill them in, in the staff as we move forward here. I think it's really great. Uh, you know, as we move forward, those, those kind of governing values will be great for, for working with the staff, certainly continuing to build with the staff uh, the kind of community that we have, but also um, the vestry, because right. you serve on the vestry right. and support the vestry and what they do and other right. key parish leaders, you know, all of those things are so, so uh, you know, critically important for us to continue to kind of just kind of lighten the load and allow people to fail because it's, you know, it's as you fail, you learn and you create new you opportunities do. for the future. You do. Well, yeah. Tom, I could not be happier than having you come in and, and, uh, and join us. And I've been thinking about this and praying this, about this for a long time, so I, can't, I, I couldn't be happier. So thank you for you coming and Christian, your wife and your family, uh, being able to bring you on board and to celebrate here at the staff. So, so thank you. Looking forward to good things, some notable failures and, uh, and some successes every once in a while and, and God's grace and love showing, showing through it. So. St. Mary's, thank you. You've got a great team, and uh, we're looking forward to what the future holds. You know, there are, these, there are some of these interesting things, so it's kind of like a, you kind of look around, and then you, you, you kind of realize, well, that's kind of odd. It doesn't seem like it really fits, or it kind of raises questions. So what's the, uh, what's the deal with the deer? So many people ask me that. The deer was a gag gift. It was one of those secret Santa gifts from years ago that we had in the closet. And when COVID shut us down, we, you or me or Christian and I, were pretty much the only ones in the service. And Kristen said, well, why don't you bring in the deer? I think that was your idea. So I said, well, that's a good idea. And Christian and Todd needed someone to talk to, or preach to. Otherwise, it's a bunch of empty chairs. So I said, here comes Bucky. So next thing you know, Bucky's showing up at the services. So you have, you are Christian, Bucky, and that's it, in an empty, in an empty room. So Bucky helped us fill kind of a void. And now he's just become the CFW mascot. Um, He's become a very good friend. He wanted his own office, by the way. Did he? But yeah, we couldn't. He could have your office. Yeah. Do you want? Do you Maybe. Want? Yeah, he could hop around. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the funny thing is, when I watch the feed on Facebook or YouTube, and I've seen it more than one time, some of Father Christian's friends would say, "That was a great sermon, Christian, but 
where's the reindeer? <laughs> the one I, that really I've seen matters. that many times on the <laughs> online comments. So. so that's the story of Bucky. I don't know how long he'll last, but we'll, we'll try to keep him patched and going. So here on the St. Mary's campus, um, deer hunting is forbidden. We do not, we have to keep, we have to keep Bucky safe. And, uh, and Bucky is a very good friend of ours, so, uh, so treat him well. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. <laughs>